dwell in Hall of Kings. On ocean steed, my words gain wings. All in speed, I forth will bring. For noble deeds, thine honor sing. Hush now. <laughs> There's a woman called Nal who came by ship to Thornburg and heralded, Drop reminding to meet King Sigmund, Styrbjorn's father. Nal was from Gautland. She was tall and rugged and strong, and everyone who walked near her said she smelled of men's blood. When a message was sent to our king, Nal was made to wait a full day. Yet she did not complain. She watched the waves and sang songs. Night came and went, and still Nal sat by the shore of the fjord, singing her songs. She skipped rocks with children and smiled. As the afternoon of the second day approached, King Sigvaldi's messenger reappeared. They spoke quietly together. At last, the messenger stood back and waved to some men nearby. Three men bearing three chests of silver approached quickly. We can continue later.
go. Hey!
Cut the mast off! alone. Yeah. 
Come here a moment. Run up the sail. Sing, my ravens. We need an epic tale. We all remember when Eivor gave orders to attack Kjotve's clan in Avalsnes. I knew even then our chance at victory was slim. It was a fool's errand. But Eivor demanded we strike. And I am not one to disobey my superior. Such is the mark of an honorable man. You all know what followed. We set upon Kjotve's men and were overwhelmed. You lot were captured and fit to be butchered. And Eivor here, carried off to be sold into slavery. A fate worse than a fine death. But there is one fact you do not know. In the initial fight, I came upon Kjotve. He did not see me, and I came within two arm's lengths of him. 
I could have slain him! A fast stroke of my axe, ending our troubles! But I held Take back. Yeah, Why? Because I remembered my oath to Eivor. Yes. Years ago, Eivor had staked a claim on Kyotr's life. Master. So I left the background alone. Yes. A pity, Dag. There's no one living who can verify yeah. this incredible tale. <laughs> Drop the mask! Raise the mask! Strike up a two. Let's hear a story. Let's yeah, sail! Yeah. Unar the Ugly was an excellent sailor who could pilot a longship oh, entirely yeah. on his own. This is why King Sigvaldi kept him around. In all other matters, Unar was a cruel, anxious, and humorless man. He was one of the most unlikable people I have ever known. One year, I recall we had invited some carls from the Ingling clan to dine with us. As we were serving ale, we came to find that we had none left. It so happened that the ale had run out just before reaching Unar's horn. This raised in him a word storm, and he accused Sigvaldi of treachery. Every man in the longhouse jeered at Unar for raising such a fuss. This made Unar angrier than before, and he stormed out. A short time later, we heard him yelling through the door of the hall. I set this scorn pall upon the men of England for their dishonor! We looked outside and saw that Unar had severed one of the heads of the England's horses stuck it upon a hazel branch. When he saw us gathering at the door, the Ingling Carls among us, Unar panicked and ran. He was not seen for many months.
Guards here are vigilant. Cast.
Stretch your wings, Sue.
by Ravens. Sing us a song. Yeah. Yeah. We'll pick up from there. Here is a tale. Some years ago, I took to sea with a sword dancer called Aeon. A brooding warrior with a face of stone and oak-hard arms. On a raid in Corland, we shored up along the edge of a forest and explored until we came to people parts. A large farm. It was night and all were asleep. So we set about plundering the place in the quiet of eve, taking sheep and goats as we pleased. It was then that Eil saw a farmhand and pressed the boy for the family's hidden silver. Farmhand squawked like a crow. Being hid beneath an anvil at the Smith's Forge, the silver was no trouble Sail to lift. Out. In secret, we took it and the boy back to the ship. It was then that Ale grew sad, for when the farmers woke with the crack of day, they would know they had been robbed, not by whom. So Ale ordered three of us to follow him back to the sleep hushed hamlet. As we burnt the houses, Ale shouted his name. I am Eil, son of Skatlagrim, and I am the man who deprives you of everything but your life. I never sailed with Eil again. Not long before leaving for England, I made a solitary trek into the mountains east of Thornburg. I was looking for elk or deer or other game to bring home. But my luck was poor, and I could find nothing worth my arrows. Coming up over a rise, I saw a rounded mountain ahead of me, with a strange narrow slit in the earth, running left to right. There appeared to be fresh water in this crevasse. 
which was strange, for it was on its side. As I approached, the ground rumbled and the crevasse shuddered. Then it opened as wide as a lake and ringed with... Were you at the good part yet? As I approached, the ground rumbled and the crevasse shuddered. Yes, then it opened as wide as a lake and ringed with color. Stepping back to take in the view, I realized with a shock what I was seeing. The Eye of Jormungandr, the World Serpent. Yes, he sleeps near old Thornburg, blessing us with his dreams. Oh, if we could return there now, I would show you the place. One day, maybe. One day, I will show you the place. I know a crazed man about my age called Roku. We are taken to calling Roku the Rogue for his habit of collecting axes. For 20 years, he collected axes of all make and size. He had never seen a day of battle, but he swore to Thor that he would. In his 31st year, after drinking too much ale, Rokur seduced another man's wife. That man called the Holy One against Rokur. Rokur accepted the Holy One, and on the agreed upon day, he laid out 12 of his axes and asked, Which of these will I use to slay you? Will it be Bone Splitter? He said. My bearded blade inscribed with Sather runes, affixed to a handle of English oak? Or Blood Fountain? He continued. My Danax, which swings through the air on two hands with the speed of an arrow's flight. Or might it be Twin Wolf Wounder? Roker growled, growing even more bold. A fierce pair of throwing axes. At that moment, the man who had challenged Roker brought a large stone down upon his head. Roker died instantly, and his axes were given away as gifts. <laughs>
I should be cautious around here. What have you got for me today? Ah, that one's pretty good. There, better than before. Is that what you want? Ready for battle. I must take my leave. So long. Be well, my friend. I would like to reorganize the crew. All right, bring out my lieutenant. I will see you later, friend. I have come from afar to join your crew, Eivor.
by Thor. I'll be ready when you need me. May I see your stores? You know you have use for this. It will see many battles. I imported this with you in mind. Eager to find a new home for these. Perfection. And I mean that. Yes! This is a brilliant choice. As a friend, I think you should buy this. Done shopping for the day? I'm off. Be well, friend. Until next time, Eivor. Thank you for this. Whether fur, meat, or bone, we will provide only the finest. And if you intend to go hunting, consider bringing us your kills. We will prepare the hides and heads. Aye. I've been mounting Petra's trophies for years, and she's a discerning woman. In all things. I'll keep that in mind. Enjoy your new home. Eivor, you seem to be someone with a penchant for trophies. I do like victories, but I rarely keep a record of them. Your weapons show the marks of great battles. And you walk with a pride that speaks to your triumphs. Am I wrong? You are not. Why do you ask? To bolster our trade, of course. Wallace is the finest tanner and taxidermist in all of England. If you wish the tales of your hunts to outlast you, there is no better way than making trophies of your kills. If you defeat a rare and worthy creature, bring it to us. We will display it for you. A good idea. Keepsakes to adorn the Longhouse. Thank you, Petra. Oh, and before you go, could you spare a moment for a small favor? Go ahead. For the past few evenings, I've heard the howling of a pack of wolves just beyond the border of our woods. Unchecked, they will ravage the wild game in this area. And once the deer are dead, they may turn to us. You feel we should drive them off? I would eliminate them entirely, with your permission, of course. And your help, if possible. A good idea. I will join you now. Good. A pack of wolves is a foolish thing to underestimate. Let's go. An arrival. I wonder if Volka is among them. This way. I last saw them prowling around just up the hill. You lead. I'll follow. Our settlement is in quite a nice spot. Beautiful terrain, and the animals here are healthy and populous. But wolves are a worry. It may be why the Ragnarsons moved on. Humans upset the balance of nature, and nature pushed back. By attacking us. A wolf will do whatever it takes. They were displaced. Now they come to our door. Come this way. Look here. Breadcrumbs and crusts. They must have stolen something from Tarbin's stall, or off a table somewhere. You saw breadcrumbs from where you stood. They stand out clearly from the soil and grass. See there? Come. 
This way. Ah, smell that. That's a male wolf, marking his territory, warding off the competition. How do you know it's a male? A different odor. You pick it up. How did you come to be such a skilled tracker? My family were hunters and trackers. From further east than you've ever seen, I imagine. But I've lived in England for most of my life. This is where we found Wallace. You two are siblings, as Sigurd and I are siblings. Bound by honor, not blood. Yes. To hear my mother tell it, we came upon Wallace abandoned. A babe in the woods. We took him in. Look, the wolves made a kill here. They're in the area. Those trails, they must have dragged the poor beast away. We're getting closer. Ah, see those teeth marks on the carcass? They're different. This is the pack's doing, not just one. That's right, let's go on. So your family found Wallace in the woods? We were traveling through the forest when I spotted a white elk ahead of us. I chased it, hoping to take it down. I lost it as I came to a clearing. And there on the ground was a wee babe, our little Wallace, swaddled and alone. Ah, look at that, the pattern on the grass. They slept here. I'm impressed, Petra. You have a raw skill. You have seen nothing just yet. So, you saw a white elk, and that led you to Wallace. That's right. It felt fated. We took him in and nursed him back to health. I was scarcely more than a toddler myself then, and from that day forward, we were raised as brother and sister. Hmm. These kills are fresh. They're likely near enough to hear us. Probably fled the scene not long ago. I think we found our wolves. You there! Get to cover! Eivor, with me. Let's in. That should be all of them. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much, both of you. Are you all right? Were those your sheep? They were. God take them. They were all I had in the world. Poor blighters never stood a chance. I lost my cows some months back. Now the sheep are gone. Frowny Jesus, what sort of farmer am I? I'm sorry for your loss. With the wolves gone, you can recover in peace. Not without the blessings of God, I won't, but I shall try. You have your life, farmer. With that alone, you can always rebuild. Ava, hold. I hear something. What? Oh, oh, goodness gracious me! Felix, Rosemary, my beauties! You're alive! Come here, my precious angels! Well, that worked out. This was grand, Eivor. You hunt almost as well as you fight. Give me a few weeks, I'll learn to track as well as you. Or better. I would be happy to be so humbled. This was a joy, Petra. Do not hesitate to call on me the next time you spot any errant beasts. You were the first on my list, Eivor. See you soon.